and I want to welcome you. And uh, my name is Dr. Stan Jensen. I'm the president of Henry Ford College, and of course, this is our place. And we're so glad you're here, and welcome. And uh, appreciate everyone being here. Certainly, special welcome to our candidates, and uh, appreciate the, their engagement in our communities. And uh, glad that they're here tonight. You'll, of course, they are the center of attention tonight, and you'll hear from them in just a few minutes. But uh, I want to also, uh, one of the things, of course, that we'll emphasize is uh, engagement in your community this evening. And of course, there's probably not, nothing much more engaging than a candidate. And uh, walking the streets, um, writing things, uh, giving speeches, uh, getting acquainted with uh, who they're going to represent uh, on all sorts of concerns in our community. So uh, in my background, just real briefly, I've uh, <clears throat> probably the earliest beginnings of it were in high school, and I would guess that's probably true of some of you. And uh, I was fortunate enough to write a really good essay, have a really good interview, and uh, several other things, and win a contest to get a f uh, week's full expense paid trip to Washington, D.C. And, uh, and I got to meet all sorts of people as a junior in high school, and uh, there were several girls there. But uh, <laughs> I didn't notice them, of course. But, uh, but there was about 1,000 youth, actually, all the same age from uh, across the country. And I got to be one of those and uh, got to meet our U.S. representative. And uh, at that time, this is, you know, horse and buggy days a long time ago, but uh, White House tours were quite different and uh, got to get into lots of places that uh, is a little bit more difficult, at least today, to get into. But, and uh, through, my, through the, my career, before becoming a president, I was uh, chair of uh, the largest uh, county as far as uh, one of the political parties uh, in Iowa, which was where I grew up. I was uh, president of planning and zoning in one of the fastest growing uh, communities in the Midwest. Uh, been on several chambers, economic development things, and certainly engagement, volunteerism was an early part of my life. My dad was a, a state senator for 24 years. And uh, so I appreciate very much the sacrifice of uh, these women and men here. and. Uh, uh, many others that are here in the audience that are running for office or have served. And I want to <clears throat> introduce to you two uh, of my favorite people, and they happen to be two of our trustee members on the board here at Henry Ford College. Uh, they get paid nothing for excellent service. We keep doubling their salaries, of course, and, uh, but I appreciate their uh, volunteer, their engagement. And the president, uh, chair of our board, is Hussein Barry, and he's right over here. Please uh, welcome him. <clears throat> and seated next to him is Roxanne McDonald, one of our terrific uh, board members as well. <clears throat> Henry Ford College, as you probably know, has recently changed its name, and so we're excited about that and all tr trying to uh, get it right. But uh, it signals whole new day for Henry Ford College as far as serving our community and serving our students. We have also just recently started a university center which will partner us with several universities in the area including of course our great neighbor just right next to us in providing not only associate degrees here but uh, baccalaureates and master's degrees right on our own campus and uh, we hope to also in the near future add our own baccalaureate degree in culinary arts and hopefully if we can change the law and get nursing uh, as a part of what we can do, we'll also add that one. But uh, we serve our uh, manufacturing community, our liberal arts community, transfer students, uh, students that aren't quite ready for college. We help in lots and lots of ways and are so glad, so glad to serve this community and this state. I want to uh, introduce to you uh, the real organizer of this evening, one of them, and, and uh, has been uh, so instrumental in helping us as a college and one of our great faculty members. His name is Anthony, Dr. Anthony Perry. Dr. Perry is a faculty member right here at Henry Ford College. You would probably guess it. It is in political science. And he is the founder and the director of the Democracy Institute at Henry Ford College. For over two decades, Dr. Perry has been working to promote civic engagement and political education uh, during the last 10 years, he's been right here at Henry Ford College, 
He has engaged students in and out of the classroom in teaching about the uh, democratic education, peace building, and inspiring them to move uh, more into being engaged in our community in numerous uh, activities. Uh, he's also uh, a spot, has sponsored the uh, democratic institution, including the one here at Henry Ford uh, College's own annual Michigan uh, Student Political Issues Conference, which I have had the privilege of attending one. I've been here one year, so I have perfect attendance. But, uh, but it's a great uh, event, and he has uh, led that for many years. These conventions have been nationally recognized as uh, exceptional tools to inspire and educate. Dr. Perry has authored and presented his scholarly and educational work at national conventions. Overall, uh, his work in civic engagement uh, has centered on empowering citizens with skills and, uh, to be effective actors in the American democratic process and to find their own political voice. Please join me in welcoming to the platform Dr. Perry. Thank you, President Jensen. Your support for this activities and others like it are instrumental for the Democracy Institute's efforts in promoting democratic education and civic engagement. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Henry Ford College, and thank you for coming tonight. I would like to thank the League of Women Voters, or Leagues, from Wayne County for putting together this most important forum to, to provide voters with valuable information about those candidates seeking the position of Wayne County Executive. I would like to give a special thanks to Betsy Cushman, the president of the League of Women Voters, Dearborn Dearborn Heights, Christina Schlitt, the president of the League of Women Voters for the Gross Points, and Paula Bowman, the president of the League of Women Voters for Northwest Wayne County. Without these individuals, Without these individuals, this event would not have been possible. This event and the League of Women Voters online voter guide at vote411.org uh, are excellent vehicles for learning the stances of those seeking elective office. Also, I would like to thank all, the, all of the candidates running for this office. We often forget those who seek and serve in elective office is an essential public service for our democracy. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. At, the, at this time, I am proud to introduce Paula Bowman, the president of the Northwest Wayne County League of Women Voters, who will be the forum moderator. Thank you. Good evening. And in partnership with the Democracy Institute at Henry Ford College, the Leagues of Women Voters in Wayne County welcome you to the Candidates Forum for the candidates running for Wayne County Executive on the August 5th primary ballot. My name is Paula Bowman, and I'm actually the Vice President of the Northwest Wayne County League. Angela Ryan, who is assisting with this forum, is our President. The other two leagues in Wayne County that have helped, and as um, Dr. Perry mentioned, are the Dearborn Dearborn Heights League and the Gross Point League. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization. We never support or oppose any political party or any candidate running for any office. The League does take positions on issues after careful study, so sometimes you may see our name attached to an issue that we are advocating or opposing. The League of Women Voters is where hands-on work to safeguard democracy leads to civic improvement. We invite all of you to look into becoming a member of the League and be directly involved in shaping the important issues to keep our communities safe, strong, and vibrant. Membership is open to all persons of voting age. Um, there are a lot of League members here tonight, and we ask you to seek one of them out and talk with them about joining. This is a public service organization. We are especially busy in election years like this one tonight. The League's main mission is to promote political responsibility through informed and active participation in government. We want voters to be educated. One of the ways we do that is by having a forum like the one tonight, but we also have another vehicle at your disposal, and that's an online voter guide that will be available at the end of June. All the candidates 
on the August 5th primary ballot, in addition to the Wayne County Executive candidates, have been invited to participate. The website is easy. It's vote411.org, and it's a simple procedure of typing in your address, and the candidates that are on your ballot will pop up. Except for the judicial candidates, all the other candidates that will appear on the August 5th primary ballot will either be Republicans or Democrats. The Republican and Democratic County Executive candidates who win the most votes on the August 5th primary will advance to the general election in November. You may not split your ticket on the primary ballot. That is, if you choose to vote Republican, all your choices must be Republican. If you choose to vote Democrat, all your choices must be Democrat. If you cross over, your ballot will be invalidated. You do not have to be registered with a political party to register to vote in that party's primary. So don't feel as if you're limited by how you usually vote. Nobody keeps a record of that on the primary. Just um, you can vote any way you choose. The format for tonight's forum is as follows. Each candidate is going to be allowed a one-minute opening statement, and they're going to walk up to the mic to do that. They'll also be answering questions that we have received from the audience. There will be a one-minute response to each question. They're going to stay seated for that part. At the end, they'll be making a closing statement that is also one minute. And again, you'll see them proceed to the podium. Um, there will be a few questions in between that are just simple yes or no questions, but primarily they are able to talk for one minute at each session. We hope you all picked up a copy of the audience rules when you came in. It's especially important that your cell phones are turned off, that you hold all applause till the end. We want no expression of boisterousness or dismay at anything the candidates are saying. And we also ask that you avoid disruptive photography during the forum. If you would like to ask questions of the candidates, there were index cards at the back, and some of the league members are still walking around with index cards. They'll be brought up here to the front, where we do have a couple of screeners who are checking them over for duplication and clarity. Questions should be brief, to the point, no personal attacks. We're looking for a positive environment tonight so we can listen to the candidates talk about what their future in this office will be. We have a number of league members assisting at the forum tonight, specifically Angela Ryan, Christina Schlitt, and Sharon Riley here are screening the questions. We have a number of people who are roaming the hall, picking up questions, and Steve Trowbridge, who is also doing the timing. Um, Kevin Zawala is also filming our forum, which means that we'll be allowed to have it linked on all three of our Wayne County websites within probably a week. Um, Channel 7 is live streaming this and it will be available on their website also. The views expressed in this candidate forums, forum are those of the candidates, not of the League of Women Voters. And we're going to get started now with our first opening statement. We're, for this part, we're going to start in alphabetical order. Mr. Adamski, if you would proceed to the podium and introduce yourself. And My name is Adam Salam Adamski. I'm a candidate for Wayne County Executive because I'm the best qualified candidate in this race. Uh, my background is I'm a United States Navy veteran, the only veteran in this, com uh, in this contest. I have a Bachelor of Arts degree from that great university in East Lansing uh, in political science and history, and uh, we enjoyed being Big Ten champions and Rose Bowl champions. Uh, also, <clears throat> uh, I'm a widower. My lovely wife died from pancreatic cancer at the very young age of 41. Uh, I believe that in this county, we are the second most crooked county in the country, other than Cook County, which is the president's county. I promise you, if you elect me, that I will end political cronyism, nepotism, and favoritism in our county. Also, you need to know... Thank, thank you. you. I neglected to mention, as you're making your way to the podium, Mr. Um, Bolden, I neglected to mention that we are missing a few candidates tonight. Mr. Wenderlicht 
Mr. Zepkowski um, are not here. Ms. Dara, we're still hoping will attend. She agreed that she would come. Um, and the third is Mr. Kavanaugh, who is stuck up in Lansing as the House is voting. So um, we'll be hearing something from him later. But Mr. Bolden. My name on your ballot on the Republican side of the ticket will read Fred A. Bolden. I am running for Wayne County Executive because I want to improve the quality of life for each resident in the county. With my background in information technology, criminal justice, civic leadership, I will bring a fresh perspective, a new voice, and a new way of making our government work for each of us. I have been committed to improving the quality of Wayne County since I was a student at the University of Detroit. As an undergraduate student, I contributed to the implementation and creation of the emergency medical system for the Detroit Fire Department. As a graduate student at St. John's Provincial Seminary, I lived and worked at St. Rita's Parish, uh, working primarily with our senior citizens for the Northeast Vicariate. I had a wonderful experience also working as a counselor for St. Charles Home for Boys and Girls and later became a board member. When I purchased... Thank you, Mr. Bolden. Our next candidate is John Dalton. Good evening, everyone. My name is John Dalton. I am a Republican candidate running for county executive uh, here in Wayne County. And I'm currently a member of the Livonia Human Relations Commission in Livonia. And we deal with uh, civil rights issues. And right now we're tackling the issue of uh, human trafficking. I am running for Wayne County Executive because, well, there, it's been too long for a culture of corruption in Wayne County, and I'm hoping to get elected to end that. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Warren Evans. Minutes go quickly, don't they? Uh, my name is Warren Evans, and I'm running for County Executive, and I'm running for County Executive basically, basically because we need to seriously change the paradigm in Wayne County in terms of how we govern. We have historically been about certain elected officials and their fiefdoms, and what we need to be about is the collaboration and regional cooperation to move this area forward. I think we have a very dynamic chance here to have elected officials who will collaborate will understand that the county's general fund is not the only money available, that we have federal grants, that we have a number of things that we can do to enhance the quality of life in our communities, make our management system functional and solvent, uh, and do things to move this region forward. Too long have we been talking about the decline in our population. Let's talk about the population going up. Let's talk about the quality of life in our communities. Let's talk about spurring entrepreneurial ventures. Let's talk about keeping young people in our community who, ha who are leaving now because of lack of opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have Robert Facano. Good evening. I'd first like to thank the uh, League of Women Voters for this opportunity and uh, Channel 7 for streaming this this evening. Uh, my name is Robert Facano, and I've uh, been in public office uh, over 32 years. Uh, my first priorities have always been uh, not only to uh, run an administration that, that looks at fiscal integrity, but uh, more importantly was uh, the job creation that we needed for this area. Uh, under my stewardship, Wayne County has been a leader in making sure that there was economic development with the helping of uh, the different uh, factories that have been uh, jobs expansion that occurred in uh, Trenton, Flat Rock, and other locations. Uh, also brought some fiscal integrity when people said that it couldn't be done in terms of getting those state to approve a plan in the Board of Commissioners. It has happened. And today with the announcement uh, at the Board of Commissioners uh, concerning the jail issue that we were able to uh, have a pathway that is going to resolve it, uh, people who said that things couldn't be done and possibly be done, point fingers, we were able to step in, do the job, and we'll be able to continue to do the job in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Next we have Russell LaVisca. My name is Russell George LaVisca. Thank you, Women League of Voters. And for the audience viewing this day, I want to share with you that this office I did not seek. It saw to me 25 years of public service at Wayne County, and I recognize that we need leadership. This system of the county executive is too powerful for one person. 243 potential appointees with full benefits, no more. We're going to break this machine down. 
I'm asking for each of you to come on out and vote for Russell George LaVisca. I need the young people to register to vote. Um, July 7th is the deadline for that. So my parents, 38 and a half years, UAW, George LaVisca, and mother, 25 years civil service under McNamara administration, I say, stand by your young people, stand by Russell George LaVisca. We'll lead you guys through. <laughs> Thank you. And Mr. Kevin McNamara. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Kevin McNamara, and I'm running for Wayne County Executive. Wayne County government has become a dinosaur. It's one that's old, it's bloated, and it feeds constantly to sustain itself. And we, the citizens, seem to have to put up with the services that come out the other end. For too long, the administration has told the communities what services they will get. They have not been asking the communities what services they need. I am the only candidate up here with a real plan to rebuild Wayne County in the 21st century. More than 100 elected leaders have asked me to take Wayne County back, back from the communities, back to honest government, back to balanced budgets, back to funding the prosecutor and public safety, back to restoring Wayne County as an economic powerhouse, because they know my plan and they believe in my plan. And that's why I am running for Wayne County Executive. Thank you. Thank you. And Ms. Betty Scott. Good evening. For those of you who do not know me, I am Betty Cook Scott. I am the candidate who led the appeal and the reform of that dreaded driver's responsibility law. That should get me a lot of brownie points because it took away some of the mobility of our citizens. I've, unlike the other candidates up here, come with three disciplines. I taught school in the Detroit public school system. I also, what's the police, Detroit Police Department. Worked my way up from being a police officer, a detective, to a sergeant. When I left to become the state representative, I was a lieutenant. I wrote laws that were enacted into policy. Betty Cook Scott has been told to me that I'm progressive, I'm strong, and I'm compassionate you will get that type of person as your Wayne County exact. We will revisit the jails, and we will revisit bringing corruption to Thank a end in Wayne County. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. William Wild. Good evening, and I too would like to thank the leagues for putting this event together tonight. Uh, my name is Bill Wild. I'm 46 years old. I'm a Democrat. I'm the full-time mayor of the city of Westland. I've been the mayor of Westland for the last seven years. Before that, I was in the Westland City Council for six years. I'm also a small business owner. I own an automotive recycling business in Wayne County. Uh, we just recently celebrated our 25th anniversary. The reason I'm running for Wayne County Executive is because I think we can do better. Uh, we've been defined by our failures. We've been defined by scandals. We've been defined by, by greed. I can tell you as I talk to residents around the county, they want and they need and they expect better leadership than they've been getting out of the county executive's office. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Christopher Wojtovich. Good evening, everyone. My name is Christopher Wojtovich, and I'm a candidate for Wayne County Executive. I sure do like the alphabetical uh, order that we go through. I've been through that all my life. But I'm here to tell you that I am a serious candidate and I want to do the job that needs to be done here in Wayne County. We want to fix the fiscal deficit and fix the structural deficit that we have because those two items are the items that are going to bring Wayne County back to where it was and it's going to bring us back with all the other counties in this region. Because I've had an opportunity to talk to many candidates, many office holders in Wayne County, and we are fed up with it. We need communication, direct communication in all areas, in all areas that everyone can get and talk about. My platform is simple. I'm a grassroots campaigner, and I'm looking for your vote on August 5th. Thank you. Thank you. And per the rules of our forum tonight, I'm going to read the statement of Mr. Kavanaugh, who was stuck in Lansing, and I'm going to be watching our timer because 
I'm only allowed to read one minute worth of what he said, so here you go. From Mr. Kavanaugh, I was very much looking forward to participating in today's forum held by the League of Women Voters. However, I am still in Lansing, working on the final budget for this year. I am working to represent the hardworking constituents who elected me to office and to ensure that there is a voice for the citizens of Wayne County advocating for our issues in Lansing. I am up here doing the job that McNamara and Ficano should be doing and that Evans and Wild wish they could do, fighting for the interest of our residents by putting policy before politics. We have already passed an initial version of the budget and are now waiting for the Senate to make amendments and to agree upon a roads package. We will then vote on the final result. The transportation package up for consideration would include $1.4 billion in roads funding. This package would be the biggest job creator in decades with projects expected to begin this year. Wayne County should get at least 100 million of these funds and I am working diligently and I'm going to stop because that's the end of our opportunity for Mr. Kavanaugh. We have several questions that we'd like to get started with. The candidates are going to stay in their seats and pass a microphone around. We did um, pick numbers out of a hat and Mr. Wild pick number one, so he's going to respond to the first question. And it is, what are your priorities to balance the Wayne County budget? My priorities are going to be just like they were in the city of Westside when I came in. I inherited a $50 million deficit that we were facing, and today we have a three-year balanced budget with a $5.5 million surplus. We're going to bring everybody to the table just like we did in the city of Westside. We're going to bring the other elected officials. We're going to bring the unions to the table. We're going to take a look at the numbers, and once and for all, we're going to get the budget straightened out so that we can start reinvesting in the county. We've been managing decline for too long, the decline of our infrastructure, the decline of the health of our residents, and we're going to start focusing on public safety. We're going to reinvest in the things that are important to the people at home. When I talk to people at home, they talk about the prosecutor's office. They talk about the rape kits. They talk about the lack of prosecutors. We're going to start off with public safety. That's something I learned as the mayor of the city of Westland. We'll start off with public safety, and when we talk about it, we're going to fund it as well. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Vojtovich? I'll repeat it. What are your priorities to balance the Wayne County budget? First thing I will tell you in regards to the budget, and I've had an opportunity to look at our comprehensive financial report recently, the auditor's report that has come out by the commissioners, and the independent auditors that we have in management and budget, because that's where I work. And I find it very difficult to find that each one of them has a different take on it. And my purpose is this. Let's open the books. Let's get them all open so that everyone is on the same page, so that we all have the same answers to the deficit problem with working in a structural way in creating and slimming down and only doing our mandated services first and then taking a good hard look at what else we need to do to service the citizens of Wayne County. This is my first and foremost goal it, to get the budget in order and keep the state out. Thank you. Mr. Adamski, what are your priorities to balance the Wayne County budget? My priorities are to bring more jobs to uh, Wayne County. The way to do it is not to raise your taxes, but to we'll start out with raising the property assessment on all foreign car dealerships by 75%. Uh, the second one will be anyone who's bought a foreign car in Wayne County, uh, we will put a 10% value added tax. All this money will go to repair our roads, and our bridges and our infrastructure. The third one is, is that I would go after the textile industry in the South to bring it back into America so the shirt that I'm wearing that was made in Indonesia will be made in Detroit by Detroit labor and our unions. Those are three things that I would do to balance the budget. I also would never pay anybody over $70,000. That's max. And we start them off at 35000 So that's how I would run uh, the office itself and how I bring revenue and jobs into the county. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bolden. 
the first team that I will assemble is the finance team. Uh, the two people that I've already brought aboard on my team is uh, Dr. John Moore from Walsh College, who teaches economics and finance. Uh, he'll be part of the budgeting process. And uh, Dr. Kenneth Miranda, who also works for the International Monetary Fund, and uh, he has a $6 billion budget that he is in charge of. And those are the type of people that I would bring to the table in order to get us out of the financial mishap that we're in. And then I would start growing it through jobs. And uh, also, uh, with the fewer and less appointments, I think I could get by with about 25 appointments, which would save us about uh, uh, $20 million from the top. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Dalton, what are your priorities to balance the Wayne County budget? Uh, well, my priorities would be to first um, reform the uh, pension system that we have in Wayne County right now to a 401k system for uh, younger workers. That way it would be easier for uh, the county to actually pay off, you know, uh, people that have pensions. Anyway, um, number two, I would put together a fiscal stability board. And by doing that, I would bring in people from the uh, business and the financial sectors to come up with a debt reduction plan and to hopefully get our county back in, uh, to a balanced budget. That would be at least for a start. Thank you. Mr. Evans? First, nobody in this room has a structural deficit at home, and the reason you don't have a structural deficit at home is because you know how to add and subtract. One of the things that Wayne County has to do is understand that, number one, you have to prioritize your expenditures. There's nice to do stuff, and there's must do stuff, and the must do stuff must be must be funded adequately. The prosecutor's problems currently uh, are a prime example of that. The other thing is that there are public-private partnerships that are waiting to happen in win-win situations if government and business look together to try to do those sorts of things. They're very important. And thirdly, there's grant money that's available. I've done that many times as sheriff and chief of police where we would reach out and get additional monies that could come in help us balance our budget, get rid of the structural deficit, and run our businesses like you run your homes, sensibly. Thank you. Mr. Fagano. Thank you. Uh, there will not be an emergency manager nor a consent order in Wayne County because of the action that uh, I've been able to take in, in terms of the uh, de uh, deficit. There's two types of deficits. One is the structural, and uh, the other one is the accumulated. Uh, the accumulated, uh, working with the treasurer, able to see that there was $230 million dollars with that, we were able to go ahead and show that uh, he could borrow for what he needed to do without using that as collateral. So now we have about $150 million uh, that will free up and pretty well eliminate the uh, accumulated deficit. There's three other areas that we have to work on that drives the budget on the structural. One is competency in the criminal justice system. They're supposed to have somebody have a competency determination within uh, 60 days. They blow past that all the time. That drives up the cost in the jail. Number two is mental health. The mental health uh, runs way too high in terms of beds in Wayne County. In fact, we now have a plan just approved today by Judge Kenny that is going to move a lot of the people into mental health facilities and not have them eat it up in uh, the bed space. And the third one is the forensics. Uh, to thank have you. That. Mr. LaVisca. Well, thank you very much. Wayne County needs to win back the citizens' confidence. We have lost it from the employee level, we've lost it as a citizen level. I'm 54 years old and I'm all these years a Wayne County citizen. And I believe that we need to protect our civil servants, protect our jobs. These are our jobs of all 43 communities here at Wayne County. And through the civil service sector, I believe we can have a stronger hand. Unfortunately, Mr. Picano just found this $230 million. So I'm looking again for win back the public's trust. Thank you. Mr. McNamara? Thank you. We keep on talking about priorities, like we can just pick one thing and we're going to fund it and not fund other things. What we've got to do is take each department, one department at a time, set the department out there with the communities, and build, rebuild Wayne County for the communities. You take the department, you pull one service out, and find out which, if any of these communities are using it. There are tons of services that we provide that we, that these communities don't even want us to provide anymore. You get rid of it. The services that they are using, you put them in. You redo the hierarchy. We have a 
bloated management structure. It, it's, it's, it's happened over many years for a hundred different reasons. When you're done, you put the thing together. Like a computer, it's going to do what it's supposed to do, no more, no less. It's going to have the right infrastructure to, to make it work properly, and then you price it. Because these people have value, this government has value. When we're done, we need one mill. We're one mill out, 10 percent. We're going to find that 10 percent in that Thank structural you. balance. Ms. Scott. It's important for us to know that the first thing that you do as a CEO, you conduct an audit. In the city of Detroit, we've been talking about a forensic audit for about 10 years, and you see what it's gotten us without doing that. That's what I would do. Each department as the same as Mr. McNamara said, we bring each department in and we would do an audit of each department. The charter says there are core services that we have to provide. We will provide those core services, but we will try to provide those core services from an economic standpoint. It's important for us to know, as I said earlier, I'm going to revisit the jail issue. I'm going to revisit mental health. Under Kwame Kilpatrick, I found out that $500 million came into mental health for the county. That's an area of concern. Child and family welfare, we're going to look at that department and try to garner some money. Grants and also talking with the employees, having them to tell us how we can cost save. That's what I will do. Thank you. We're going to start the second question with Mr. Wojtovich. What top three measures would you implement to reduce drug-related crime, incarceration, and recidivism? Well, first of all, I think we need to give our prosecutor the right tools to do the job. We have 43 communities here in Wayne County, and each one of them has a policing agency. All those policing agencies do their job. They are out there to protect us. And they have, that, they have been doing that for us, but they don't have that second backup where the prosecutor can do her job. And I think that is most important that we definitely keep the safety going on. We have a jail system that is, needs to be revamped, a justice system that's in the courts currently that needs to be solved and resolved and in turn definitely make some initial contacts with everyone to get on board and keeping each and every neighborhood safe and re disregard the no snitch law. Thank you. Mr. Adamski, what top three measures would you implement to reduce drug-related crime, incarceration, and recidivism? Well, to eliminate crime, you go after the big people, not the little guy who's selling it out on the street. So we have to find the big people from the drug cartels, and we also have to have in our culture a big change in our culture so there is no demand. Uh, again, here, uh, getting to the county prosecutor and to uh, the county clerk, they're really not qualified for their jobs. If you want an example for a real prosecutor, look at Eric Smith in Macomb County, who has prosecuted probably 10 of the most heinous crimes. You have never seen Kim Worthy in a, in a courtroom uh, prosecuting a case. You've never seen Kathy Garrett uh, change rules of having Saturday voting, early voting, uh, elimin uh, eliminating the August primary where it's hot and humid to the second Saturday in, in uh, September. Uh, there are many things that can be done, and uh, there has to be some changes, and I will have a recall vote on Kim Worthy, and thank you. Mr. Bolden, your top three measures to implement, that you would implement to reduce drug-related crime, incarceration, and recidivism? Uh, with, start with incarceration. I, would, I think it's in, uh, steeply involved with our young people not being educated enough. We need to start with uh, get, keeping our kids in school and getting programs that will start from K all the way up through 12 to keep our, to keep our youth out of, the, out of the jail system and more into schools and getting high paying jobs and nice paying jobs that's going to keep them uh, currently enrolled in that area. In addition, I would uh, work with the uh, prosecutor's office and the sheriff's office to maybe relook at the system and see how it's not working and how we can improve it through uh, in, uh, information technology and, uh, and go from that point on. 